damaging emails are leaked by WikiLeaks, raising more accusations of anti-religious bigotry and anti-Hispanic comments now, too, within Hillary Clinton's inner circle. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. Just another night in 2016. We'll get to the latest on Trump and women shortly, but first to the Clinton controversy. As we first reported last night, the emails obtained by WikiLeaks were sent several years ago. Among those included on the exchanges, Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta and Clinton campaign communications director Jennifer Palmieri. In these messages, people of faith are insulted, and there are even suggestions that the Catholic Church doctrine needs to be overthrown by Clinton's team, which apparently knows better what's good for us. <laughs> the Clinton campaign argues there's nothing to see here, there's no bigotry, and they blame the whole ordeal on the Russians for exposing the emails in the first place. But the Trump campaign was quick to, to pounce on the story. The new emails also show members of the Clinton team viciously attacking Catholics and evangelicals. They attack Catholics and evangelicals. Viciously. And that won't be tolerated, but it won't be tolerated by the voters. In moments, we'll speak with Bill Bennett, a Catholic, and a Trump supporter about the political fallout, along with Democrat Julie Roginsky. But we begin with Trace Gallagher with the late-breaking developments live from our West Coast newsroom. Trace? Megan, the newest batch of leaked emails is from 2012, a time when the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops was strongly opposing a mandate in Obamacare that called for federal funding of contraceptives. In an email to now Clinton campaign chief John Podesta, Sandy Newman, the president of the liberal group Voices for Progress, writes, quoting, there needs to be a Catholic spring in which Catholics themselves demand the end of the Middle Ages dictatorship and the beginning of a little democracy and respect for gender equality in the Catholic Church. Newman, who's Jewish, goes on to admit that he's not qualified to be involved and doesn't know how to, quote, plant the seeds of the revolution. But John Podesta responds by apparently assuring Newman that the revolution is underway and that he is helping to push the progressive agenda on the Catholic Church, quoting again, we created Catholics in alliance for the common good to organize for a moment like this but I think it lacks the leadership to do so now. Likewise, Catholics United, like most spring movements, I think this one will have to be bottom up. When the first bunch of Catholic bashing emails was leaked, criticizing our boss, Rupert Murdoch, for raising his kids Catholic, and calling conservative involvement in the Catholic Church, quote, an amazing bastardization of the faith, we noted that John Podesta, who's Catholic, did not respond. But the current Clinton campaign communications director, Jen Paul, Palmieri apparently did, writing, quote, I imagine they think it is the most socially acceptable, politically conservative religion. Their rich friends wouldn't understand if they became evangelicals. Palmieri says she doesn't recognize the email, but then she was pressed on whether she actually wrote it. Watch. I said I yeah, didn't recognize it, but moreover, we're just not, we're not, dude, we're not, these are all, these are, we are not, we are not checking, uh, we're not going to fact check each of the emails that, have was, that were stolen. Little struggle there. The conservative group Catholic Vote, which claims a half million members, is calling on Palmieri to resign. Quote, Catholics will be watching Hillary Clinton to see whether she thinks our religious faith should be respected or whether it's fair game to mock us. The former U.S. ambassador to the Vatican, Jim Nicholson, says no religion should suffer this kind of denigration and neither should Catholics. The Clinton campaign accuses Trump of colluding with Russia on these leaks. Former Trump advisor Roger Stone reportedly says he has back-channel communications with WikiLeaks but does not coordinate with them. Megan. Trace, thank you. Joining me now, Bill Bennett. He served as Secretary of Education under President Reagan. He's the Chairman of Conservative Leaders for Education. Bill, good to see you. Uh, so, Thank you. Jennifer Palmieri, I mean, this is one, this is her on the inner circle with Hillary Clinton now, and her statement today on whether she was caught red-handed bashing Catholics, let's just play it again and let the audience make up their minds about whether this is a truth teller in this moment. I said I yeah, didn't recognize it, but moreover, we're just not, we're not, dude, we're not, these are all, these are, we are not, we are not checking, uh, we're not going to fact check each of the emails that have was, that were stolen you tell me bill your thoughts well, what'd she say the russians did it the catholics did it the pope did it um, I, I, look this is 
This crowd has been anti-Catholic for a long time. This is leftist anti-Catholicism. These are transatlantic agnostic progressives. They do not believe in things like the authority of the Catholic Church. Now, as a conservative, I worry that the age of Clinton has been with us too long and may last even longer. But I've got to tell you, I think the Catholic Church will outlast the Clintons. And I think it will be around when they are, when they are long gone. This notion of up, out, uprooting thousands of years of Catholic doctrine, Revolution. we know what this is about. It, well, it's the Catholic teaching on marriage, on same-sex, on contraception, and most of all, on abortion. They just can't stand that. Catholics, I hope, will take note of this. Their faith is being attacked, their faith is being disparaged, and they should react to it. Can you imagine if this kind of talk were, were you know, heard inside the Trump campaign about Islam? I, I, well, I can't imagine, but if it were, heads would roll. Uh, you know, they'd cut heads off, I imagine, in, in the proper fashion. But uh, no, uh, I mean, it would be crazy. Look, Michael Novak, a distinguished man, thinker, and Catholic said, there's one acceptable form of bigotry left in polite society in America, and that's anti-Christianity. And Catholicism in its uh, original form is, uh, is much hated. Uh, they would like to do away with it and its teaching. But others have tried, stronger parties have tried, uh, and haven't prevailed against Rome. Is she going to be able to get away with, I don't recognize that? I, that's, that's a non-denial denial. I don't yeah. recognize it. Well, let me tell you, we, we put an email on the, on the screen on Friday that was, we got fooled. It was a bogus one about Hillary allegedly calling yeah. some Bernie uh, supporters buckets of losers, which we corrected immediately before yeah. the show ended. They were very quick to tell us when we had it wrong. They, they didn't call up and say, we don't recognize that yeah. one. They said, that's a fake, and it was our bad. We made a mistake. I don't recognize that as not a denial. And you tell me whether, given the amount of people involved in this exchange, including the campaign chair, uh, they need to come out and, and apologize. Is it so hard? I mean, Absolutely. say what you will about Trump Absolutely. and the women, and he needed to apologize, but at least he made an effort. Sure. He did. No, he did. He apologized, but they won't. Look, they'll stall. They, they, they're they looking at the numbers. They like the way the numbers look. Just stalled, you know, rope a dope right out the clock. You know, down the ball, uh, throw it out of bounds. They won't, uh, they won't admit to any of this. But the more that comes out, the more we see the heart and soul of this party. This is identity politics, and this is the underbelly of identity politics. People who don't agree with us are backward. They need to be educated. We need a revolution. Uh, and boy, that may be coming with the uh, reign of Hillary Clinton, should that, God forbid, occur. Well, i got to ask you about that before I let you go, Bill, because you've been a very strong supporter of Donald Trump. You've been an honest guy. You've, you've supported him, but you've admitted when he's misstepped. And this weekend, in the wake of that Access Hollywood tape, you, you tweeted out, or you, you said publicly, it's a, it's a shame, a crying shame, but he can't win. He should step down. I hate to say it, but it's over. Do you still believe that? Well, uh, it's not over. He's not stepping down. I feared it might be because of the play the media was giving it. I do think he responded to it well, and he had a good debate on Sunday night. Mine was an empirical judgment based on the facts, based on what I thought the media would do with it, and they have done that with it. And, of course, sex uh, overcomes uh, venality. Uh, it overcomes uh, anti-religious, anti-Catholic bigotry. But uh, I think the way that situation developed in the debate helped Donald Trump a lot. I thought at the moment... That, that Mike Pence, as the head of the ticket, might prevail, might do better. But that's impossible now. Those ballots are out there. Stick with Trump. Um, this is still possible. It's hard because of the way the thing has been played and because of Trump's mistakes, frankly, many of them. But uh, when you listen to what the Clintons are up to, what this campaign is up to, and how intolerant and bigoted these people are, we can see what the stakes are, Megan. Okay, and i got to squeeze this one in before I let you go. Back in the 90s when Bill Clinton was being accused by all these women, your brother, Bob Bennett, a favorite, famous lawyer, was Mr. Clinton's defense lawyer. You were out there criticizing Bill Clinton, and your brother was out there defending him. It was an interesting dynamic. But what do you make now of Trump's attempt to resurrect the claims of Paula Jones and Juanita Broderick and uh, Kathleen Willey? I don't know how much impact it has. You've got to remember, audio tape has a palpability to it. People hear it, they hear it over and over again. If you had audio tape or videotape of Bill Clinton with Juanita Broderick or with Monica Lewinsky uh, or with Kathleen Willey, he wouldn't be standing up in public today. That's the age in which we live. That's the information age. I think you'd agree with that. 
but i'm not sure how much impact that has people don't know what he's talking about when he talks about bill clinton to many young people this is might as well been the middle ages i feel old i don't know about you bill good to see you go good to see you megan always good to see you thank you all right i love that also with us tonight julie reginski a fox news contributor and democratic analyst julie good to see you great to see you megan you know you were on the show railing about that star of david it looked like a star of david trump said it was a sheriff star in in one of his uh tweets that he retweeted calling her crooked hillary don't do you see this as anti Catholic bigotry by the Hillary camp? Well, I see it as Catholics discussing what they consider to be a reformation in their church. And by the way, Pew just came out with a poll a few weeks ago saying exactly the same thing, that the attitudes of American Catholics, this is not a value judgment by me. I'm not Catholic. I certainly have no right to judge anybody in that sense. But what the majority of Catholics in this country feel seems to be very similar to what they're talking about and seems to be very dissimilar from what the Vatican is saying. I'll give you an example. 89% of American Catholics think that contraception is morally acceptable. 65% think employers shouldn't opt out of the law based on religious objection. Uh, you have 64 thinking homosexual behavior is not morally wrong. So if you look at those uh, statistics, you look at the fact that the majority of American Catholics seem to agree with what Jen Palmieri and John Podesta seem to be saying you in those emails. You're, you're being very charitable in your description of the emails, which are very pejorative in their tone. Very. But they're pejorative, yes, I agree they're pejorative in their tone. I also agree that they're pejorative in their tone towards the hierarchy of the Catholic Church. Also towards a couple of Latinos. Maybe, Maybe. you saw those, where they referred... I did. Where they, there's, uh, there, in August of 2015, Podesta, the campaign chair, urged Mrs. Clinton to reach out to Latinos. The email subject was needy Latinos and one easy call. And he went on uh, to list Frederico Pena, Bill Clinton's, uh, Clinton's Secretary of Transportation, and former New Mexico, Governor, New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson as the two needy Latinos she should woo. Well, I, I don't know what sense he meant. Are they Latinos that necessarily wanted to reach out to her? We're getting the characterization of the, you know, the Latin, they're just the, the dismissiveness. <laughs> they, you know, if you saw that in a Trump camp email, you'd be going nuts on them. I actually, Megan, I have to say this. On Latinos, I agree with you. On the Catholic thing, it's a little different. And the reason I took such offense at the Star of David tweet is because that's my faith. That's what I believe, and yeah, that's what I know. Look out for one, but I mean, if you defend one person no. as one religious belief and the attack on it, You're, then you should be charitable toward all of them. I am charitable, as I said, towards the fact that this seems to me from polling, and again, not my personal view, but it seems to me from polling, the vast majority of American Catholics seem to agree with their view on where Catholicism should you be. Know, but the, but I, I'm Catholic, I've lived as a Catholic my whole yeah. life, but I haven't heard my fellow Catholics speak with, so snidely about our faith other than in this but email. Are they, but are they, they speaking they snidely? They but... talk about it in a way that's hopeful, that's maybe somewhat regretful, but not with disdain about our church. Uh, and our beliefs. I don't know that that was seen seen as disdain, whether it was seen they as a revolutionary. They were mocking Rupert Murdoch for having that's the nerve different. to baptize his children Catholic. That's different. They were mocking Rupert Murdoch, and that's, as you and I both would agree, that's not acceptable. What they're not mocking, I believe, is the Catholic Church where it is in America today. What they're saying is that we're the Catholic Church, and you specifically don't, the majority of Catholics. You mock a man's decision to baptize I'm his not children. Just, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. Ba mocking Catholicism not, or the Church. No, That's no, what no. it is. That's different. why they raised it. Different, different. I disagree with you on that. I think they mocked. There's no excuse to mock a man for practicing his faith the way he wants to practice it. Let's take Rupert Murdoch out of this equation. I think it's wrong to mock people who believe contraception is morally wrong. I think it's it's wrong and pro pro choice to mock people for their pro life beliefs. What I don't think they're what I do think there's a big difference here is that what they're saying is potentially and actually actually in step with what the majority of American Catholics believe. The tone is you already made the tone. The tone is now you're yes. repeating yourself. But, but the, the, point, the point is that these people who want Trump out there apologizing for everything he did and and he's taking a lot of criticisms for not doing that. God forbid they said they don't even have to send Hillary out there. Why don't you send your director of communications out there to just own what she said and apologize to the millions of American Catholic voters who you're trying to solicit votes from in this election? Well, I'm stealing the last word. I gotta go. See you later. Love you. Mean it. Bye. <laughs>